morning folks, Brian Havens here with an update on the Asian cabinet project. As you can see I have the base dry fitted all except for the front apron. Um, all my four legs are finished. Uh, so after I finished those two legs, uh, getting the mortise spaces squared up, I uh, worked on my template to define my curve. Uh, now I used to, making templates, I used to sort of rush through them because I wanted to get back to working with real wood. Um, but I've since learned my lesson, uh, so I take my time uh, and get these, uh, get a template just right, get the smooth, no bumps or indolations on the, on the edge. Do a nice job on the template because everything else is going to follow that template. Um, now, the problem I had uh, with the, having that hexagon, that six-sided blank, is that when I went to go cut the shape out on the bandsaw, I ended up with a lot of unsupported areas on the leg blank as I cut, so I had to keep taking other pieces of triangular pieces and double stick taping them onto the blank uh, and it took me quite a while to get that rough shape out in the bandsaw. So I uh, finally got through it though and after that it went pretty smoothly. I had those, those first two legs uh, nicely shaped. But I went back to the drawing board to think about how to do the second uh, set of legs and so I came up with a sort of composite template. It's actually a side view as if you would put it on, so I could put it on the side of the blank and have the leg blank actually lying flat on the bandsaw. Um, and that solved the problem on the, on, of having unsupported areas on the bandsaw, but what it ended up doing is having another problem is that it ended up being a rough shape that was a lot further from the final shape that I was after for the leg. So I had to do a lot more uh, hand shaping with the spoke shave and some other tools. Um, so that's why it took me so long to get the other set of legs done. Now the good news is I think I figured out between trying to do these legs two different ways uh, of a way of making this leg uh, and, uh, with a fairly simple process. Um, I think uh, a lot of uh, intermediate and beginner woodworkers um, try to shy, tend to shy away from making a curved leg like this because the usual way of doing it is, involves a lot of hand, uh, uh, hand carving or hand shaping with spoke shaves and other tools. Um, but I actually think this leg can be made uh, entirely with on the table saw and, um, and on a router table. What I mean entirely, at the very end you might need to do some little bit of refining, but most of the shape can actually be done on the router table and the table saw. So I'm hoping that if I'm going to try that process out um, sometime in the future, and if it goes well, I'm actually going to make a video on how to make these, uh, how to make these curved legs without doing a lot of uh, hand shaping. Um, so that will be, uh, I look forward to doing that, that'll be kind of cool to get more people doing some of these curved legs. Um, even a slight curve on a leg can really, can really uh, up the level for, for a project. So with the legs uh, finished, or almost finished, uh, I turned my attention to working on the aprons. Um, now if you follow me on Twitter you'll know that um, during a dry fit I discovered that these aprons uh, were too long by a quarter of an inch. Um, so fortunately it was a dry fit so I simply went back to the table saw, uh, cut these to the right length and redid the uh, mortises. Um, so that just goes to show you never get too old, you never get too good uh, for dry fitting. Uh, catch those errors um, before you add the glue that way you have time, time to fix them. Now uh, a design decision I, making, I made on these aprons was uh, to instead of just having a square uh, mortise that comes straight in the traditional way. I decided to uh, round over the end of the mortise, uh, uh, end of the apron at the mortise face as well. Uh, I find that curve, that round over kind of uh, is consistent with the uh, smooth curves of the rest of the leg and the, and the piece overall. Um, but that design decision doesn't, doesn't end here because this is going to have some implications uh, down the road. The first thing is uh, during assembly, glue squeeze out. Uh, now a joint like this, that's square, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a pain, but it's not too bad because you can get a chisel straight in there. You can mask it with blue tape. Um, there's uh, several things you can do with a traditional joint like this uh, to deal with a glue squeeze out. Uh, now this one's going, this joint's going to be a little bit trickier because it's got that little crevice in there. How am I going to get any glue squeeze out, out of there? I could use some blue tape to do some of the job and use some dental tools to try to clean that up. 
Um, so I had to think about what I'm going to do. Another option w that I'm considering doing is actually, this is going to be ebonized. So I'm thinking about ebonizing it and putting my first coat of varnish before I assemble it. Um, that way any squeeze out will be easy to clean up with some water. Uh, now I could use a toothbrush and water uh, before doing finishing, but I find that uh, no matter what, no matter how much you try to clean glue up with water, some of it seeps into the wood and it affects the um, the surface, uh, the, how it takes uh, finish and dies. Uh, so I don't want to do that. Um, the other thing I have to consider down the road is that uh, I do most of my sanding before I assemble. Um, and sometimes, and then I'll go back and do some final touch-up. Now a corner like that, it's very, fairly easy to get in there and do some touch-up sanding at the end. Um, but this is not going to be so easy to get into with some sandpaper after I have to do some touch-up. So when I do my preliminary sanding before assembly, I want to make sure I uh, give some extra attention to this, uh, to this round over, make sure I get all the round over, all the ends of these uh, aprons uh, nicely uh, sanded uh, before uh, I put it together. So what's next on uh, this Asian cabinet project? So I have the uh, aprons for the side and the back uh, squared away, but I still need to uh, make the apron for the front. Uh, and I haven't made that one yet because that's going to be curved, which means bed lamination. Uh, so uh, I have my form uh, that I used for my uh, Julie armoire to make the apron for that cabinet. And I'm going to reuse the same one for making the aprons on this cabinet. Uh, so that brings up an interesting point. If you find, uh, uh, both, in both cases it's going to be a 36 inch radius. Uh, if you find a curve that you find generally pleasing, it's nice to make a form uh, that can accommodate uh, future projects as well. Uh, so I'll be able to save some time by reusing the same form over again, uh, which is nice because it, it can take a lot of time to make these forms. And so the stock I'm going to be using for this is the stock that's left over from the one side of the, uh, the legs, uh, which kind of left, because remember I took the sort of the straight grain for the leg, which leaves this uh, more or less rifts on, that'll make some nice stock uh, for the aprons, and the, and the grain will, will match uh, the rest of the, um, the legs as well. So uh, that's, uh, that does it for this update on the Asian Cabinet Project. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or uh, you want to make any comments, you can send me an email. Uh, so, uh, I'm Brian Havens, and thanks for watching.